The Animators Club. And welcome to number four of the Animators Club. My name's Tigger, I'll be your host for the day, and I hope you thoroughly enjoy yourself. The Animators Club is a show completely designed and dedicated to people interested and passionate about animation. First up, we're gonna jump straight into an animation called The Roaring Tide. Now we're jumping into Tricks of the Trade, where we're going to speak to some interesting people who are dedicated to the creation of animation. Hey guys, Scoops here again, talking to you about the 12 principles of animation. Now in the past two weeks we've been discussing ways of animating, pose to pose, and straight ahead. This week we're going to talk more about how to animate certain things. I want to talk to you about a principle called squash and stretch. 
This principle is great for adding weight and flexibility to your drawn objects. The best way to describe it would be if you imagine a bouncing ball bouncing on the ground. As it hits the ground, it squashes. As it comes up, it kind of stretches. This does add that weight and flexibility to it as opposed to just having a static ball bouncing up and down. The one important point to remember when using squash and stretch is that the volume must always remain the same. Don't let it get big and flat and get all out of proportion. You'll lose it. Keep the volume the same, squash and stretch. And that is squash and stretch. And they were great tips there. And now it's time to jump directly into chroma key with a glorious Bridget. Thanks, Tigger. The Animators Club is a community of people who may or may not know each other, who are connected by their passion for animation. Each club member can share tricks, their ideas and their artwork. This is the wonderful world of chroma key. With one flick of a switch, I am safe again. The special blue wall disappears when a background is added. One moment, a blue background. Next, I am thrust into a thriller. The Animators Club allows you to change the background with your photos, drawings or computer work. Your artwork can be out of this world. It can be really out of this world. It can be exciting. It can be romantic. It can be not so romantic. It can be a painting, photograph or computer drawing. We need your creations for me to stand in front of. We call this Change the Blue Wall. Please send your chroma key backgrounds to our email or postal addresses, which should be on the screen right now. Right now, we're jumping straight into some interviews with Knock on the Door. I'm at the home of Neil Sanders. Neil is a broad range person. He's an illustrator, he's a digital web designer, and on top of that, he's an animator. What's your main influence in animation? Probably the old uh, Warner Brothers style cartoons, especially Tex Avery's old cartoons. Really silly, spontaneous, quick gags, lots of, yeah, there's just so much attention to detail. Where do you get your ideas? Uh, I do a lot of drawings. I've got a sketchbooks that I just fill with drawing after drawing after drawing. Uh, when I was studying, I used to have to catch the train from Hurstbridge out to, uh, to Preston every day which was an hour and a half each way. So there was a lot of drawing, <laughs> a lot of drawing involved. Your style, you've described as weird. What about your method, you linear line? How do you tackle? I work in, in flash. Uh, what I use now, I, I used to do a lot of drawings, or I still do a lot of drawings manually, 
but then I'll go to the computer and I've got uh, basically a screen based graphics tablet so I draw directly on the screen. So I can draw very quickly because I, I draw every frame, I don't uh, move pieces around, I, I draw every drawing. So it takes, it's a lot of drawing but they, they can be really simple drawings. With our viewers at home, how can you describe the way you draw frame by frame? Okay, well there, there are two approaches. You either draw the first drawing and then you draw the second drawing and the third and you just keep drawing picture after picture and the story tells itself as it creates itself. The, the I used to work that way but what happens is you, you don't know where the story's going, you run out of time, it doesn't finish itself. What I do is I draw what's, what well, I would start with the storyboard. So I draw the main key drawings to tell the story and then I in between that so I draw more drawings in between each one to try and get the story telling itself and then just keep going until it smooths out. And what about your attitude to colour? Uh, really bright primary colours is what I like to use. Um, I like a lot of posters and things like that. I do a bit of screen printing so really flat bright colours work well for, for that sort of simple line work. You teach at tertiary level. What advice have you got for younger animators? Uh, mainly to, to draw a lot. Um, I encourage people to, to draw from life so you get a, an understanding of how things are made and how to recreate them. And then because you're going to do so many drawings in animation it's important that you get them right so that the whole thing works. So when you were taking that one and a half hour trip on the train from Hurstbridge to Preston, did you draw people in the carriages or did you draw out of your own imagination? Uh, both, yeah. Um, you, kind of, you can get away with drawing people on the train, but you can get caught so you pretend that you're drawing <laughs> from imagination. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So what about with that method of drawing on the train? What about uh, body shape, character? When um, I want to tell a story, I will have an, a number of characters outlined that I want going to create. And the main thing is that they all look very different from each other. And they have uh, very obvious silhouettes so that I can... Re the audience can tell them really clearly and simply apart from each other. Uh, so colour use, sizes and shapes. Someone could be square, someone could be round, someone could be shaped like a bowling pin. Just accentuating someone's body type to, to get something really simple and fun out of it. You mentioned silhouettes. Do you actually mm. do silhouettes to see how they stand against each other? Uh, it is good too, yeah, to, to just fill them with, with flat colour and just see what they look like. Yeah, definitely. Neil, thank you very much for coming on the Animators Club today. I've really appreciated the chat we've had. Thanks very much, Annie. Now, get out your pens, pencils and scribes, it's time to draw with Adam and Kian. There's something seriously wrong with this club, there is no passion. Man, I have passion everything man, animation, sound, graphics, it's all passion bro. It's lost the plot. Adam doesn't have passion, he doesn't know what he's talking about. No, 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 I mean drawing with passion. <sighs> Thanks Tigger. And then we're back. Uh, today, we're just gonna be doing torsos, male and female. I'm gonna be doing the male. Uh, Adam's gonna be doing the female. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get started. It's exactly like the head, with just guides and basic outlines. So we're gonna go, we'll just do a very, very basic head and we'll just go neck down, straight to the torso and just down to the waist. So let's begin. So we're gonna have the head there. 
and the uh, thick neck for the male. I'm going to extend that down, do the collarbones, and we'll just put a line straight down from the head all the way down the chest, and that's for the for the whole thing. So you're going to have the line going all the way down where the abs are and everything, so everything's in correct order and in the correct line. So we're going to have another line coming across here, and that's for the shoulders. And um, yeah, so we're just chucking the shoulders there. So I'm not making a bit muscly so you can really see what I'm doing. Put the pecs in and just keep on going down for the body. So for the, for the abs, we'll make them stand out a lot. And you can always, you can always rub them off quite a bit so, so he doesn't look quite as muscly. And that's quite easy, I can show you right now actually. Um, for a little bit of ab, if you want, just do that. Like just slight lines, just to show he's like, he's, he's a bit built. Maybe the love handles in as well. Um, but for, for quite, quite big abs, so he's quite built, he's quite a built guy, maybe bolster them in quite a bit more. Put some more muscle coming down here. Yep, so just keep on adding them in. Just add them in more. And you can add like a few lines coming down and make, and make him have a V as well if you want it to be quite strong. If you don't want it to be that strong, just give him like a normal straight frame. Um, yeah, so he's got quite a little bit of a V and to, to give it more muscle, just add like a few lines here, just to show he's got a little bit more muscle. I always cut it off on the arms. So we're gonna be doing the arms in another episode. And of course you need to add the nipples, which a lot of people forget for some reason. Yes, they do. They do. Maybe, maybe give him a bit of sinew. The thing with sinew is on the chest, it always goes straight to here, so it comes from here and then expands out. So we're going to come in from here and expand. And your biceps later will come in here and they'll be over the top of the back V that you've got. All right, so that's the basic male form with all the muscles articulated and everything like that. Uh, so now I'm going to hand it over to Adam to draw the female. Thank you, you Keon. That's right. All right, just like Keon did, start off with the head. Now the you know the neck is a lot thinner because it's a female. Now the shoulders. Now come down, draw a box like that. The rib cage. It's like you know across there. All right, come down just under the rib cage. Then the hips come down here. They're a bit wider than the nails. Now like that. Now for the chest, draw them like that under there, like that, like that. Now I'd like to draw this to to define the, the hips. And that's the basic female form. Okay, it's not the greatest drawing, but it's got every aesthetic in it that you need to know. Yep. Excellent. Yep, so that's the basic male and the basic female. Back to you, Tigger. Falling into our next animation in transit. I hope you enjoy.
Soundtrack speak. Hello, my name is Jack Quigley and I am a composer. I have composed two conflicting soundtracks to Chris's image of the razor wire. I thought Chris's razor wire was very harsh and it extended into perpetuity. So I constructed a very harsh sound and a contrasting soft sound. The harsh sound was constructed on a program called Max MSP, heavily affected and made to sound as large as I possibly could. This is a harsh sound constructed on a synthesizer. All of the sounds in it were made to sound like there was razor wire in your ears. The sounds were made to sound as large as possible using compressors. The two sounds were split onto the left and the right channel and the gains were moved up as far as possible. Soundtrack number two conflicts with the image. This soundtrack is soft, whereas the image is hard. This soundtrack uses reversed strings and voice sample. Now last week we showed this image and we also got one of our composers to create a soundtrack completely made out of household goods. Now this week we're jumping onto a different composer's bandwagon and checking out what they've done. Now can you do that? Send us in your best efforts, we'd really like to see it. Now once again, I want to say thank you so much for watching. This has been our fourth episode of The Animators Club. Please stay tuned, tune in next week as well. Jump on our website, which you'll see directly on the screen. I would love you to send in any, any sound files you have completely created out of your household items for the hospital scene. And if you have any other chroma key designs you'd love to send in for our backgrounds, please do so. Stay tuned, I'll speak to you next week. My name's Tigger, and you've been watching The Animators Club.